Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hi. Natasha's upset today, aggravated. Wouldn't you be? I would be too. Ancestry updated. I hate them. They're scams. Don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, so <laughs> we've been planning on doing this video for this day for a while. And this is the day they have freaking did the, well, I don't know if they did the update today, but it's the day I looked at it. Mm -hmm. mm. So they change things all the time. They sure do. Scam. I, I went from 28% Scottish ancestry mm -hmm. to 25. And now, yeah, wait for it. Seven freaking team. <gasps> 17. It's ridiculous. It's How can old. they change that? It they doesn't can't. just change. Well, they change your stuff too. You are who you are. And we know you're made up of Scottish. Why do we know this? Because you meet like most of the Scottish personality traits. What are you talking about? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that had to do with what you just said. Yeah, I don't buy it. I already know the truth. So whatever. They'll, they've taken things down before and then increased it later. So they do. whatever. It's all a scam. But hey, I'm proud of it. So... I want to say a special thank you to our dear friend, longtime subscriber and patron, Roz Hunter, for sending me this epic shirt from Scotland. It's awesome. Land of the Unicorns. Yes, thank you, Roz. She's been wearing it to death. I have. And also saving it for a video for this particular one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm super excited about this video. We've not done this. Before we get into all that, if you like today's content, please hit that like button and consider subscribing only if you want to. So, you know, since you don't have any Scottish ancestry, mm -hmm. I thought I'd bring us a little treat for the video. Oh, I love treats. Yes. We can't watch this and not do it the right way. Iron brew. Oh, that's cold. See if I can get it without getting it all over me. Made from girders. It's the spot. <laughs> oh yeah, it was funny. Thank you, Roz. She sent me these coasters too. I <laughs> I obsessively use these. Oh yes, that is on the desk. Debbie tries to give time. me this old ugly coaster we used to have from back in the day. I'm like, keep that thing away from me. Where's my Scotland coaster? Stop moving it. Anyway, so it's time to get into the video. 101 facts about Scotland. I am so excited to learn these. Um, our Scottish friends, let us know in the comments if any of these are wrong. Mm -hmm. And everyone else, let us know if you learn anything with us. Here we go. Welcome to this rugged edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam. Yes, I'm back from getting trapped in the monkey enclosure at the zoo. Thank you, Chris. And I'm here today to talk to you about a country absolutely caked in beauty and whiskey and bagpipes and kilts and haggis and other stereotypes that aren't actually reflective of the real place. Yes, it's Scotland. Because the Scottish love nothing more than an Englishman explaining the details about their country. <laughs> oh. If it helps, I'm half Irish. But what unique sports are at Scotland's very own games? Which pretty essential inventions do we have the Scots to thank for? Ooh. And can I get through this whole video without attempting a Scottish accent? Can I? I hope I can for my own safety. <laughs> Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so let's get ready to go to a land, uh, up over, rather than down under, at least it is to England anyway, <laughs> with 101 facts about Scotland. Yes. Number one. Scotland is not a theme park, but a country, and a part of the United Kingdom, covering the Duh. northern parts of the island of Great Britain. We uh, might just have to wait and see how long that fact's accurate for. But right now, in 2021, Scotland is still yeah. a part of the UK. Number two. I linked on it. The Scottish mainland borders northern England along the Anglo-Scottish border, as you can see here. This border <laughs> was established all the way back in 1237 at the Treaty of York. That's the year, by the way, not the time. It's approximately 96 miles long. The Proclaimers mm. would have to walk across it 5.2 times to make good on their vacuous promise and then do the same thing again. <laughs> Number three. Scotland's capital city is Edinburgh, which confusingly is spelled like this. It's an important place for reasons we'll get to later, don't you worry, but just one of them is that in 1824 it was the home to the world's first fire brigade. So without oh. Edinburgh, we'd probably just have to use a tap or something against a house fire. Number four. It wasn't always the cap, though. Dunfermline used to be the capital of Scotland. In fact, 12 of Scotland's own kings and queens are buried in the town's abbey. Number five. Huh. While Edinburgh is the capital, Glasgow technically beats it because it's bigger and has a population that's also larger. The number of them, I mean, not the physical size. <laughs> no, I don't. 
Number six. Oh, no. The population of Scotland as a whole is 5.4 million. I didn't know that. Which I guess is small when compared to, you know, the likes of you American lot with your states and stuff. But hey, Scotland <laughs> has new Asgard in it. Or rather, where they filmed it for Avengers Endgame. So, uh, there. Number seven. <laughs> The word Scotland comes from the Latin word Scotia, a word that was used to describe Irish settlers in both Ireland that. and mm -hmm. Scotland. So Scotialand sort of makes sense, just without the, you know, IA. Oh, and the Gaelic name for Scotland is Alba. <laughs> Languages, eh? Number eight. <laughs> but look, those are some broad strokes. Let's go for some good old fashioned history here, okay? We can look back as far as the Paleolithic era for Scotland to around 12,000 BC. During this period, it was home to an advanced alien race with huge technological advantage. Of course, I'm joking. <laughs> it's the usual. There were small groups of hunter-gatherers who lived there, surviving just off the land. Wow, that's pretty cool. Number nine. They then stayed that way for around 8,000 years, with the next notable change in around 4,000 BC, when folks started claiming Scottish land as their own and using it for farming. It was around this time that people started using proper shelters and houses and making pottery. We all need a hobby. As well as weapons and utensils, some of which are still being mm. discovered today. That's impressive. Nice. Number 10. Like most societies, Scotland continued to develop throughout the Bronze and Iron Ages, making better tools and weapons, and laying further importance on wealth and social status. Let's be fair, that last bit hasn't really changed. Number 11. I'm really liking this. I like how he's going through, he's giving us a lot of comedy along yeah, with the information. Yeah. Well, we did that one on um, England, mm -hmm. and um, he was pretty funny in that one too. But I, I didn't realize they were going to use the same guy. Like I, I don't know. Right. I we've only seen the other one with on England, so I <laughs> was kind of surprised they do use an English guy for the Scottish one. True. <laughs> She's good. No. The first properly recorded bit of history in Scotland is from 79 AD, when the Romans showed up like they seemingly did bloody everywhere. Wow. Whilst they were <laughs> successful in the south of the UK, they were actually effectively fought off by native Celtic tribes, named the Caledonians and the Picts. Mm -hmm. Number 12. You know what I mean. After the Roman invasion failed to conquer Scotland, the country was divided into a series of kingdoms, the four most important of which were the Picts, the Gaels of Dalriata, the Britons of Alt Clut, I and the this Anglian part, Kingdom of Bernicia. Mm -hmm. Number 13. And then, as they so often do, the Vikings arrived in the 8th century and established themselves most successfully in the Scottish islands and coasts. As the Norsemen continued their successful conquerings of Britain, Scotland consolidated their kingdoms and became the Kingdom of Alba. Number 14. <laughs> Jessica Alba's face. Kenneth I MacAlpin is credited as the first king of Scotland, as he's believed to have founded the country in the year 843. The first fully recorded king of the country, though, was Donal McCorstantin, who is documented as the King of Alba in the year 900. Number 15. Fast forward to the thousands now, and Malcolm II, who was a rival dynasty, acquired the throne by killing Kenneth III. Afterwards, he focused on expanding his territory southwards and excelled with victories like the Battle of Carham. Number 16. I'm sure you've all heard Macbeth as the name of William Shakespeare's play, mm -hmm. but it was also the name of Scotland's king from 1040 to 1057. Shakespeare before? very loosely based this play on Macbeth's rise to the throne. A lot of the characters were real historical figures, but yeah, it was an artistic interpretation. Okay. Number 17. Between the first king of Scotland in 843 and 1173, things were pretty chilled in Scotland. If you don't count all the treason, that is, because there was so <laughs> much of it that we'll have to gloss over it. We'll be here all day otherwise. Number 18. In 1173, though, Scotland entered a revolution against Henry II of England. To cut a long story short, Henry II's sons and wife started a rebellion against him because Henry promised some castles to his son John, and heir to the throne Henry was annoyed because he couldn't use them to reward his knights or aristocrats. To be fair, they were supposed to be his inheritance, but anyway. Number 19. Huh. So how was Scotland involved? Well, Henry kept nicking their castles. Then Scotland's King William I, also known as William the Lion, was captured by the English Royalists during the Battle of Alnwick and was transported to Falaise in Normandy. Number 20. Here, William was pretty much forced to sign the Treaty of Falaise, which essentially gave up Scottish sovereignty and handed it over to the English. The treaty was later completely annulled by King Richard I when he wanted Scotland's help during the Third Crusade in 1189. Number 20. I like that he goes back through history and does it in like uh -huh. almost kind of a chronological order yeah. in a way. And then it's helping me remember um, we did that one video on the history of Scotland. We learned a lot. That video mm -hmm. was so cool. Yeah, Had sure a lot was. of in interesting information in it. And it's helped me remember some of that stuff that we learned from there. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. But I find this to be incredibly interesting. Oh, it's fascinating. 21. During the 13th and 14th century, Scotland saw several wars of independence from the Kingdom of England. It was very back and forth depending on who was in power, so I won't go into the details of it, but with the Declaration of Arbroath in 1320, Scotland remained independent. 
Number 22, Ooh. That War of Independence and the revolt against King Edward I of England were the setting to the iconic movie Braveheart. William Wallace is that Scottish guy with the blue face paint from the memes. You know, the one who shouted, they will never take our freedom. Number 23. The next and arguably most important period in Scottish history is the reign of the Stuarts. The first Stuart King, Robert II, took to the throne in 1371, but the most famous of the Stuart monarchs is Mary, Queen of Scots. Number 24. Mm -hmm. Mary became Queen of Scotland in 1542, aged just six days old. Of course, a baby couldn't actually rule, so regents ruled the country in her place until 1561 when she returned to the throne, after her husband, King Francis II of France, died. Number 25. During her reign, her second husband, Lorne Darnley, was killed in an explosion, and Mary and her third husband, James Bothwell, were later subject to an uprising that would have them imprisoned. Mary attempted to regain the throne later on, but failed and fled to seek help from her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I of England. Yeah, and was it uh, Mary's son, uh, King James? I think so. Elizabeth's uh, heir, not heir, I'm sorry. Um, six successor. Successor. I, I like have to yeah. stop and think. I'm like, I know. Make sure we're using the right word. Did I say the right word there? <laughs> you ever have those moments where it's just like, well, I know the word. It's, uh, my, my mouth can't get it out. Exactly. <laughs> Number 26. Probably not the best idea, though, as Mary had previously voiced her claim to the English throne and was seen by some as a legitimate sovereign of England. So Elizabeth, viewing her as a threat, imprisoned her for 18 years until 1587, when she was beheaded for treason. I didn't realize it was 18 years. Number 27. No. Mary had a son with Lorne Darnley, her second husband, and after Queen Elizabeth I died in 1603 without having any of her own children, and thus no heirs to the throne, Mary's son James VI became King James VI of Scotland and King James I of England, yeah, resulting cool. in what's known historically as the Union of the Crowns. Number 28. Despite having the same monarch with one big crown, Scotland and England were still governed as individual states. This would continue for another century until 1707, when the Act of the Union was passed, creating the United Kingdom of Great Britain, which encompassed Scotland, England, and Wales. And we all lived happily ever after, and nothing bad happened to us ever again. <laughs> Number 29. I gotta say, though, that was still one of the things that surprised me the most was, I thought, Scot you know, I'm just hearing that Scotland was... Not recently, of course, but 17, what do you say, 71? I think so. Um, into the UK, like, it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That would be sooner. Like, or not sooner, later. Yeah, earlier. I'm going to try not to talk <laughs> the rest of this video, because clearly it's not working out for me today. Fine. Not everyone was thrilled with this union, though, and this led to the rise of the Jacobites in Scotland. One of the most famous leaders of the uprising was Charles Edward Stuart, although not the same Stuart as before. He was also known as Bonnie Prince Charlie. Number <laughs> 30. The Bonnie Prince attempted to reclaim the Scottish throne for the Scottish lineage, but after decades of battles, the Jacobite cause failed when Charles Edward Stuart died without a legitimate child in 1788, followed by his brother Henry in 1807. Number 31. The Jacobites were no doubt also fueled by the Highland Clearances, which began in 1746 when the British imposed laws to assimilate the traditional Highland clans. Their tartans were banned and clan chiefs had their rights removed. The really? land was then transformed for farming and rural areas were depopulated to favour the booming fishing industry in coastal towns. Number 32. After the Act of the Union and the fall of the Jacobites, Scotland entered what we call Scottish Enlightenment, where the country's major city saw an influx of intellectual improvements with more buildings like universities, libraries and museums being built. Okay. Number 33. Around the turn of the 19th century, Scotland was also changing economically with huge advances in industry, particularly in coal mining, shipbuilding, and textiles. Glasgow also became prevalent around this time because of their status in the tobacco trade. <laughs> tobacco trade. It's kind of apt that I cough there, really. <laughs> Number 34. Scotland continued its development steadily, and then the First World War came along. As part of the United Kingdom, Scotland played a major role in the two world wars, especially in providing ships, machinery, food, and money, as well as soldiers, mm -hmm. obviously. Number 35. Because of the huge boom in economics provided by the demand of the war effort, once the First World War was over, Scotland was hit by the Depression, much like the Great Depression of the United States. Number 36. Didn't know that. During the First and Second hold up, World hold up. War. Just Scotland? <laughs> or I all know, the UK? I think it was all. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thought. Okay. Depression of the United States. Number 36. During the First and Second World Wars, Scapa Flow in Orkney was a very important Royal Naval base. The Shetland Isles also played an important role due to their fairly close proximity to occupied Norway. Between 1941 and 45, the Shetland bus operation helped many Norwegians flee the Nazis. Number 37. Awesome. 
the slightly confusingly named Scotsman Sir Robert Watson Watt is credited for the invention of radar technology. He and his assistant, Arnold Frederick Wilkins, used radio signals to locate aircraft at long distances, which was one of the most valuable technological well, and tactical advancements during awesome. wartime that's in Great Britain. Awesome. Number 38. After World War II, the economy of Scotland once again suffered with the post-war depression. Uh. This time though, while some industries continued their decline, the Scots found a new source of economic success in the North Sea. Oil. It was a big deal because it was the first source of oil that the UK themselves had made. Number 39. In 1999, almost 300 years after it last closed, Scottish Parliament reopened for the first time. Wow. This was after the Scotland Act was passed in 1998, which established a Scottish Parliament and government that would have responsibility for the laws that were specific to Scotland. Okay. Number 40. Mm -hmm. In 2014, Scotland held a referendum about Scottish independence. In response to the that. question, should Scotland be an independent country, 45% or 1,617,989 people voted yes, whilst 55% of voters or just over 2 million people voted no. Huh. That's what the vote was, huh? Yep. Interesting. I won't go into that anymore because yep. I'm sure that can be a topic that is not for us to discuss. Yes. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to... Exactly. I'm just going to go back to the video now. Scotland has remained part of the United Kingdom ever since. Again, as of this video recording. <sighs> Number 41. As I said earlier, Scotland shares its southern border with England. Also surrounding the country though is the Atlantic Ocean to the west, the North Sea to the east. Oh, and that's it. The meaning of life. Ireland is just 13 miles away to the southwest from the peninsula of Kintyre, and Norway 13? is about 190 miles to the east. That's it? The north wow. I didn't know they were that close. No. Sorry. Didn't know that. Did you know that? I did not know that. Not at all. Huh. Always learning. That's insanely close, both. I mean, but Norway, that surprised me. Mm hmm Okay. So are the Faroe Islands, but they're part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Okay. Number 43. Scotland has more than 790 islands, but only around 100 of these islands are actually inhabited. Most of the Scottish mm. islands can be found to the north and west of mainland Scotland. Number 44. Those islands to the north and west of Scotland are grouped into three island groups, Shetland, Orkney, and the Hebrides. The Hebrides are also mm -hmm. further split into Inner and Outer Hebrides. That's how you pronounce Number 45. that. Number 45. Hold on. Well, I didn't know that's how you pronounce that word. <laughs> you don't want to know how I was pronouncing that in my head. Well. Because I have the map of the UK and I've been looking at those different islands mm -hmm. and stuff. How, how would you pronounce that if you didn't know? Is that I, right? Did I he pronounce that right? again. But he's English. It could be wrong. Sorry, English friends. Split into Inner and oh. Outer Hebrides. I would have said Herbides. Or Hebrides. Hebrids. Mm. That's what I was saying. The inner and outer yeah. Hebrids. I'm sure we're I didn't both know. wrong. It's the first time I've heard it said. <laughs> we haven't even looked at them yet. So And hopefully he's pronouncing it right and he may not be. That's what I said, but I know I'm not right. And I know you're not right. <laughs> I know I'm not right. <laughs> Just didn't know. Now I learned. Number 45. <laughs> The largest of Scotland's islands is Lewis and Harris on the Outer Hebrides, and the third mm -hmm. largest of the entire UK, if you consider mainland UK and Ireland to be islands themselves. It also has the Fair. largest island population in Scotland, which makes sense, right? At around 21,000. Number 46. One of the most famous islands of Scotland is the Isle of Skye, located in the Inner mm -hmm. Hebrides. It's the second largest Scottish Hebrides. island and one of the rockiest and most mountainous places in Scotland. We haven't seen that yet either. Number 47. Scotland's also home to the largest waterfall in the entire UK. Essa Lewin in Sutherland oh, has a sheer drop of 200 metres. When it's what? in full flow, it's actually higher Ouch. than Niagara Falls. What? Number really? 48. Can I just see how freaking beautiful Scotland is? Every time we I see know. it, I'm sitting here like, uh, drooling over it. It is so beautiful. I know. It is. Where so is this picture he keeps showing? Mm -hmm. Scottish friends and family? Please, where is that? Are you wanting to go pet the grass again? I wasn't even thinking about the grass. I was thinking about all of it as one. Mm -hmm. It's just it is a beautiful freaking shot. gorgeous. You got water there. You got this green, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. You got the city. You got like a mountain thing back there. Yeah, it's got everything right there. I mean, one photo. That's, where is this? Someone please tell us because that is freaking gorgeous. Speaking of big things, Ben Nevis is not the name of some bloke, but it is the name of a mountain in the Highland region of Lakeba, and it's the tallest mountain in the United Kingdom. We don't oh. really have that many, though. It stands at 4,413 <laughs> feet tall, or around 723 of me, stood on top of each other. I wouldn't want to be the bottom one. <laughs> Number 49. 
The summit of the mountain is actually the collapsed dome of an ancient volcano, and is the highest yeah. point in any direction for 459 miles, wow. where you'd reach the Scandinavian mountains of Norway. Number 50. You know what goes hand in hand with mountains, right? That's right, rivers deep. Thanks, Tina Turner. Nice. Well, the longest river in Scotland Rest is the River Tay. Its source can be found in Ben Louis in the Scottish Highlands, and it runs a whopping 120 miles to the mouth between Perth and Dundee, where it runs into the North Sea. Okay. Number 51. One of the largest castles in Scotland is Urquhart Castle Not on the banks of Loch Ness. Many miracles are. Sorry. <laughs> I think every time I see a castle on the water, I yeah. think it's that. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to say that again. It did look like it for a second. It did. For a second. South between Perth and Dundee, where it runs into the North Sea. Number 51. One of the largest castles in Scotland is Urquhart Castle on the banks of Loch Ness. Many oh. miracles are said to have been performed here during the early days of Christianity in Scotland. England and Scotland fought over the land many times throughout history, which oh. led to it falling into ruins, but that in turn created a stunning view of the loch. Number 52. The Nap of Hawar on the island of Papa Westre in Orkney is said to be the oldest and best preserved stone house in the whole of Northern Europe. It dates back to between 3700 to 2800 BC and even oh. has surviving stone cupboards and stalls. Number 53. Aberdeen has the nickname the Granite City, as huge volumes of granite can be found there. So wow. much so that its granite was used to build London's Houses of Parliament, Trafalgar Square, wow. Waterloo Bridge, the Thames Embankment, and much more. Wow! wow. Hold the presses! That's a whole lot of granite. That's impressive! Yes. Now I want to go see that little stone house. <laughs> Just, Let's, I do. Let's go back to the, all the things that that granite, granite has, has yes. made. That came from there. Uh, that's incredible. Did, you, did everyone know that? Tell us if you did. Tell mm. us if you didn't. Specifically if you didn't. I really want to know if you didn't know that. Exactly. That is so cool. Okay, we were wow. this fact. That is awesome. Stone cupboards and stalls. Number 53. Aberdeen has the nickname the Granite City, as huge volumes of granite can be found there. So much so that its granite was used to build London's Houses of Parliament, Trafalgar Square, Waterloo Bridge, the Thames Embankment, and much more. That's crazy. Number 54. Okay. Off the coast of Angus in Scotland is wow. Bell Rock Lighthouse, which is one of the seven wonders of the industrial world. Why is that, you ask? It's because it's the world's oldest surviving sea-washed lighthouse. Really? Yeah, you're welcome. Number 55. That's beautiful. Another iconic location in Scotland is Balmoral Castle. Which mm -hmm. Okay. We did a video on this last year. We did. What is my favorite castle in the UK so far that I've seen? I'm going to say Balmoral. Absolutely. I can see why the Queen loved it so much. Mm -hmm. This That is such a freaking beautiful place. And what we saw of the grounds, too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, my goodness gracious, that is so beautiful. It is a stunning castle. I love all the... Roundy things <laughs> and the upy downy things. I know you've all told me before, but I'm still gonna use. She doesn't care about my arch my <laughs> architecture <laughs> de uh, descriptions. Yep, Debbie's architecture. Yeah. Um, turrets. Um, <laughs> but no, I love this castle. Everything about it. Um, if there was a place like that, I could have like a wish, a wish mm -hmm. that I could live. Right there. Yep. Absolutely gorgeous. Which, as viewers of The Crown will know, is the British royal family's holiday home, owned by Queen Elizabeth II herself, and is not part of the Crown estate. It's all just Lizzie's. Number 56. Balmoral was actually bought by Prince Albert, the husband yep. of Queen Victoria, back in 1848. The house was quite small when they first built it, since <laughs> so they had a larger version constructed that would accommodate their big family and all of their staff. I just... Number 57. Oh, incredible. Balmoral Castle, as it stands today, was finished in 1856, and the old house was demolished. The royal family have continued to use it since, with various improvements such as formal gardens, a water garden, and new staff buildings being made since. Number 58. The Castle of May in Cape Ness also has royal connections after wow. being purchased by the Queen Mother in 1952 huh. after the passing of her husband, King George VI. She had the derelict castle repaired and made fit for use, regularly visiting until her death in 2002. Number 59. The National Day of Scotland is St Andrew's Day on the 30th of November. People use that day to celebrate Scottish culture, cuisine and of course dance. St Andrew is a patron saint of Scotland even though he'd never actually visited. Also we're celebrating it by putting this video up out a month before it. Number six. Well, not for us, but. Okay, I think we've heard of that, uh -huh. but didn't actually know what it was. No. We um, November 30th. Mm hmm Okay. We should try to find a. Uh... Not too long from now. Let us know if you'd like us to try to find some yeah. video or something on it, because I would like to know it more. It goes into a little bit more description and yeah. tells us more about it. Absolutely. 60. 
English is the official language in Scotland, much to their chagrin, but there are over 170 different languages spoken in the country. The ancient Celtic language of Gaelic is still used in Scotland, and is believed to be the founding language of the country. Number 61. Scotland is also home to the Highland Games. They we take place from Kowal to Tom and Toll, and are a unique mix of more than 60 sporting, cultural and social events, including track and field, highland dancing, tug of war, and most famously, <gasps> the Scottish hammer throw. Is this why I'm so good at tug of war? <laughs> I'm asking. It must be. You've never played with and me. And track and field. I am awesome at tug of war. Uh, in high I'd school. imagine you would be. Why? Just when we've grabbed different things at the same time and she always snatches it right out of my hand. I have a grip issue. You do have a grip issue. I grip things With so everything. tightly and I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. It's ridiculous. Yep. Like Debbie's trying to... <laughs> you couldn't open this right now if you wanted to. No, probably not. <laughs> okay, so why do you have a wrench? <laughs> so we need to open this box. Well, why can't you just open it normally? Try. Uh, because your super mega strength put the cap on, and now we can't get it off. <laughs> it's not, not really that hard to get off, is it? Uh, apparently it is. Well, let's try it without let's try it without that. I don't want to hurt my hand anymore. <laughs> your knuckles are turning red. Okay. So, this has really come to this? Yep. <laughs> That's what people do. Because, why again? Because they can't use their teeth, and you have super... Unhuman strength. Scottish ancestry. Screw you, Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. I know. You're going with what you know. In the hands. I them to tell you. <laughs> Number 62. The Scottish hammer throw, not to be confused with the Olympic hammer throw, Hello. features a metal ball weighing up to 10 kilograms on a four foot shaft which is then spun around the competitor's head before throwing forward. Wow. The competitor cannot spin around like the Olympic one. They have to stay grounded in one spot. Oh, wow. Number 63. The Cabre Toss is another iconic event where competitors throw a oh. large wooden pole with the aim of hurling it in as straight a line as possible so it lands at the 12 o'clock position from the thrower or... Can My please... people are freaking strong and they would take your people down. Sorry. I was thinking, can you please try this? Me? Yeah, the pole throwing. Yeah, I can. There you go. <laughs> I got this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to go like... They'll be like, look... An American, I'll be like, mm. talking to me, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I no. To look that looks like that. our telephone pull out. It does. Up front. I like, know. good lord. And they're just freaking beasts. Yeah. Well, these guys eat like a whole turkey I know. <laughs> for lunch and then <laughs> uh, chicken for breakfast. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's insane. That is. That's a telephone pole. That is huge and heavy and yeah, Debbie. Awkward. Oh my gosh, we gotta watch this at some point. Tosser. Although, you shouldn't call people that. Whoa! The pole's usually made from a large tree and is between 16 to 20 feet, weighing between 41 to 68 kilograms. Jeez. Nintendo 64. Highland <laughs> dancing is a style of dance that developed in the Scottish Highlands in the 19th century. It was a form of Gaelic folk dance, but has become more formalised with the rise in popularity of ballet and other dance styles outside okay. the Highlands. Number 65. The dances are often performed to Highland bagpipe music and dancers wear soft leather dance shoes called ghillies. The men often ghillies. wear a hat called a balmoral and both male and female dancers wear a tartan kilt. Number 66. Oh, kilt. Tartan is probably one of the most iconic, albeit stereotypical things associated yes. with Scotland. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's an important part of Scottish culture, with the different colours and patterns representing various clans across history. Number 67. As well as their tartans, each clan has its own crest badge. The badge consists of the clan chief's crest, circled by a strap and buckle which has their motto on it. Technically, the badge belongs to the chief, and each clan member can wear it to show allegiance, but it always belongs to the chief. I just, in America, hearing the word clan is always just like, oh gosh, stay right. away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Means a little something different, <laughs> obviously, yeah, but it's just, it, does. it still throws me off every time I hear it. It does, I'm but like, it's, it's... I don't want to say that word. It's so interesting, though. Number 68. How do you say it? Clan Donahue, or Clan Robertson, is said to be one of the oldest in Scotland, with links to the royal house of Athol, who ruled the Scottish throne in the 11th and 12th That's centuries. Mine. I'm that one. <laughs> Number 69. <laughs> the largest clan, though, is said to be Clan MacDonald of Clan Renald. Their history goes as far back as fighting alongside Robert the Bruce during the Wars of Scottish Independence all the way back in 1314. That's mine, too. in the year, not the time. Number 70. Every year, more than 50,000 people gather in Edinburgh to celebrate Scottish culture at the annual clan gathering. 
during the gathering, the great clan. <laughs> See that? I'm sorry. The annual clan <laughs> gathering. Say that here. No, you oh, wouldn't boy. say that here. That just did that not mess with you too? <laughs> I'm Love sorry. That. It's just not used to hearing these things in a sentence like that mm -hmm. and in, in a positive way. <laughs> exactly. Not at all. <laughs> Such different cultures and histories. Whew. The Scotland parade the Royal Mile through the capital, proudly representing their history. Number 71. And what accompanies that parade? Only the most iconic of instruments. Well, the most iconic to be associated with Scotland anyway. Bagpipes. The bagpipes. The bagpipes are literally a bag of air with a number of pipes sticking out of them that produce one of the loudest sounds in the universe. <laughs> okay, that last bit is more subjective than fact, but my god, they are loud. They are loud. Number 72. While it might be most famous for use in Scotland, bagpipes actually are said to have come from ancient Egypt, brought over by invading Roman hmm. legions. Never heard that the before. The current form we see the bagpipes in now, though, was definitely developed by the Highlanders of Scotland. Ah. Mm -hmm. Number 73. Scotland has quite a history with tennis. I didn't know this. They claim to have the oldest tennis court in the world, with what? the Royal Tennis Court of Falkland Palace, built in 1539 for James V. But I suck at tennis! And of course, tennis legend Andy Murray was born and raised in Scotland. Although when he wins, we like to say he's British. <laughs> Number 74. I'm not good at tennis, but I'm good at badminton. Uh, Just go with it. Yeah, you are. No, You're good at badminton. Scotland is also where you can find St Andrew's Lynx. Nothing to do with Zelda, but it is to do with the biggest public golf complex in Europe, because, well, that's what it is. Huh? Golf is said to have been played there since the 15th century. Wow. Number 75. Nice. I know a lot of you love your gin, but did you know that Scotland produces around 70% of all of the UK's gin, with more than 100 different kind of the boozy beverage? Huh. So next time you go to the bar, remember to enjoy a shot of Scottish gin. Not an ad. Number 76. What Scotland is really famous for, though, in the drinky world is whiskey. Scotland ships 39 mm -hmm. bottles of Scotch whiskey every second. To classify a Scot, it has to be produced in Scotland and matured in oak casks for at least three years. Hmm. Scotch is understandably their national drink and is the biggest export in the whole of the UK. Mm. Number well, 77. This is better. Just to really Scottish hammer throw home the importance of the whiskey industry in Scotland, whiskey exports earn between 125 to 135 pounds a second, what? making it a key part of Scotland's economy. Wow. Number 78. I guess it's not a surprise then that the largest bottle of whiskey can also be found in the country. The famous grouse experience in 2012 holds the record with a 1.8 meter tall bottle that holds 311 liters of whiskey. Wow. Sounds like a good wow. pre drink session to me. Juice. Number 79. Scotland has an unofficial other national drink, though. Yep, that's right, I'm talking Iron Brew. Mm -hmm. If you've never had it, it's not my favorite, but there's hey. a reason it's the most popular soft drink in Scotland. In fact, it's one of the few countries in the entire world where a Coca Cola brand drink isn't the most popular soft we drink. Know this. Nice. Number 80. Of course, one of Scotland's most famous foods and their national dish is haggis. Haggis is basically a yep. big ball of mashed up sheep heart, liver and lungs mixed with onion, oatmeal, suet and spices, all stuffed into the lining of a sheep's stomach. Cool. If it makes Move you on. feel better, they don't always use the stomach lining now, they oh. just use something similar to sausage casing. Nope, Didn't never tried it. Didn't make me feel that much better, but hey, some That's people like That's not right. Number 81. Sorry. Scotland also nope. produces over two thirds of the world's langoustine or scampi, a small <laughs> lobster thing dubbed the most important commercial crustacean in Europe. Scottish lobsters are also available in Michelin star restaurants across the world, including 20 in Japan alone. Really? Oh, and yeah. they have loads of scallops and other fresh seafood. So if you're a seafood lover, you'll have a great time. I'll eat that. Number 82. Of course, another Scottish food that's pretty famous is their beef, specifically the Aberdeen Angus. The Angus is the world's leading beef brand, and it's exported across the globe, as are their cattle. Wait, Angus is Scottish? The Aberdeen Angus was the most populous yeah. beef cattle. Number 83. One of the oldest universities in the world can be found in Scotland, the University of St Andrews, which was founded in 1413. Wow. It's the oldest of the four ancient universities of Scotland, and the third oldest university in the English-speaking world, after wow. Oxford and wow. Cambridge. Okay. Number 84. The Teviot Row at Edinburgh University is credited as the oldest students' union building in the world, opening its doors on the 19th of October, 1889. Number 85. Our anniversary. In the 1990s, the Roslyn Institute, the which is year. part of the University of Edinburgh, successfully cloned the first mammal from an adult cell. Not a human, but it was a sheep, and her name was Dolly. That Named was there? Oh. I know about that. I don't know it was yeah, there. I didn't realize it was there either. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Number 86. That's not the only scientific innovation to come from Scotland, though. Ooh. Scotsman Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876. Mm -hmm. The television was invented by Scotsman John Logie Baird in 1926. Didn't know that. The toaster was invented by Alan McMasters in 1893. <laughs> and the fridge was invented by another Scottish man called William Cullen in 1748. 
How else would they keep the iron brew cold? Eh? Number eighty. That was all some important stuff. Jealous of the uh, ancestry. Yes. Very smart and inventive people. Go Scotland. Yes. Yeah, those things are all very necessary in life. Yeah. We wouldn't be um, a civilization without them. Yeah, you gotta have a refrigerator. <laughs> I had no idea about the refrigerator. I knew about the phone. A TV. Um, yeah. I don't know about the TV either. That's pretty awesome. Wow. How many of you are watching us on TV right now? Let us know. Seven. James Watt, another Scottish inventor, is also credited with making one of the biggest improvements to the steam engine that helped it avoid Knew energy that. waste, making it yeah. far more efficient. This improvement in the 18th century had a huge effect on the speed of the Industrial Revolution. Number 88. A Scottish inventor can also be thanked for the invention of the colour photograph. That's right, oh. James Clerk Maxwell introduced his three-colour process to taking coloured photographs back in 1855. Nice. His first picture was of a tartan ribbon. Wow, Number 89. that's cool. Medicine has a lot to thank Scotland for too. Most famously, Sir Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin, uh -huh. was Scottish. Yeah, thank but you. in addition to that, the Definitely University of that. Aberdeen made huge breakthroughs with MRI scanners, and Scottish physician, which is surprisingly hard to say, Alexander Wood, invented the first hypodermic needle in 1853. Uh -huh. Number 90. The final Scottish invention that we'll mention is possibly the one we take for granted most in the Western world. Me. The flushing toilet. Scottish mechanic Alexander Cumming came up That's with right. the S-Bend plumbing system back in 1755, yeah. and it's still used with pretty much every flushing toilet today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cumming. Number 91. Those of you who have played Red Dead Redemption and its sequel will be familiar with the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Yes! Well, Alan Pinkerton, the founder of said detective agency, and the man regarded as the world's first private eye, was actually from Scotland, born in Glasgow in 1819. Number 92. That's only my favorite video game ever, Red Dead Redemption 2. I know. 2. The Pinkertons. That's awesome. I didn't even know what those were. I had to Google that. Uh -huh. But I don't remember any of that. I didn't know. Wow. That's Other gamer super friends, cool. let us know. That's awesome. Two. A lot of us are aware of the Encyclopedia Britannica, yes! also known as the Wikipedia of the past. But did you know it actually originated mm -hmm. in Scotland from the great mind of the Edinburgh bookseller? I didn't know. How much have we been talking about those the last couple weeks? I know, and this has come up like so often. Debbie and I keep making jokes about those. Did you guys, I'm it's, sure you did in the UK have um, people that went around your house to sell them? Yeah. Can you believe door it? Door to door. She says to me the other day, <laughs> <laughs> I wish the... Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica was still a thing because I want to go sell them door to door. I do. I would be a dream job. I know. I just want to open, like, knock on people's door and be like, I'd like to talk to you about the Encyclopedia Britannica. I just want to <laughs> say that multiple times a day and just get the door slammed. I don't know why. It was a thing of well, child my childhood. We couldn't afford the Encyclopedia Britannica. Debbie had them at her house, but I didn't. Yeah, we, we had, had encyclopedias. I don't we honestly had a know what brand. We had a generic brand. I don't even know what it was, but. Um, how many of you went in there and looked for naked pictures? And you only got was human skeleton <laughs> crap. We all did it. Oh, you did too. Oh, didn't we you? all did. <laughs> I say we didn't. But they originally Wow, Scotland, huh? Huh. That's awesome. That is fantastic. And encyclopedias were epic. I kind of miss mm -hmm. them. And McFarquhar. Well, now you know. Number 93. The Potterheads amongst you will probably recognize some Scottish landscape, especially the Glenfinnan Viaduct, where the Hogwarts yep. Express would so steam beautiful. ahead, and near there, Loch Shiel, where lots of the scenes for Hogwarts Lake wow. were filmed. Number 94. In fact, a lot of the inspiration for parts of Harry Potter books came from Edinburgh, as that's where J.K. Rowling was living at the time she was writing The Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone, if you're American. Some local cafes have put signs up if the boy wizard was written about in their walls. Mm -hmm. Number 95. A number of other famous films and TV shows have been set and filmed in Scotland. The okay. Scottish Highlands are famously the backdrop for the show Outlander, and of course the iconic Scottish movie Train Spotting is set in Scotland oh, and filmed in Glasgow and Edinburgh. Huh. Number 96. Parts of the James Bond movie Skyfall were filmed in Glencoe, Scotland, and the 2006 hit film The Da Vinci Code, remember that? Filmed scenes at mm -hmm. Rostin Chapel just south of Edinburgh. Okay. monkey based shows like Victoria and Netflix's The Crown have also filmed parts in Scotland too. Number 97. On the 17th of July 1695, one of the oldest banks in the UK was founded, now known as the Bank of Scotland. Wow. In the following year, paper money was launched and the Bank of Scotland became the first commercial bank in Europe to successfully issue paper money. Really? Number 98. Cool. The Caledonian Forest of Scotland are the only place in the world you can find the Scottish crossbill, a species of crossbill birds. It's actually the only creature that's endemic to the whole of the UK. Really? They have a distinct flight and excitement calls compared to other crossbills, <coughs> and some claim they somehow have Scottish accents. <laughs> Number 99. The national animal for Scotland isn't the crossbill, though. It is the unicorn. Seriously. 
The unicorn is symbolic of fierce independence, and in myths they're always difficult to capture or conquer, much like Scotland itself. It was introduced <coughs> into the Scottish royal coat of arms in the mid 1500s. That's so cool, right? Number 100, yeah, Ria cool. Durr. Here are some famous Scottish people for you. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes stories. Sir J.M. Barry, author of Peter Pan. Sir Sean Connery, Ewan McGregor, James McAvoy, Kelly MacDonald, Sir Alex Ferguson of Manchester United fame. Sir Chris Hoy of Bikes. And Angus and Malcolm Young of ACDC fame. I didn't know Ewan McGregor was Scottish. I did not. I thought he was English. I had no idea he was Scottish. Yeah, I sure did. Huh. huh. No, I'm just like going back in my head. I've seen almost every movie he's done, mm -hmm. and I don't recall ever hearing a Scottish accent. Huh. Oh, and of course, Gordon Ramsay, who was born in Scotland and trained to be part either. of the Rangers football team before becoming a chef. Number 101. Really? Oh, there are more one. redheads in Scotland than anywhere else in the world, including Karen Gillan, the best redhead in the world, and just an all round lovely lady. Those <laughs> are 101 facts about Scotland. Do you live there? Have you been? Well, that was a lot and quick. That was. Um, but with these videos, again, it's only the second one we've done, you learn a lot in such a short time. Like, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, my lord. So, the things that stand out to me, that granite, Aberdeen, right? That, yeah, that one so. was amazing. That's just an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. Like, that's nuts. And so cool. And then the inventions we didn't know about. Yeah, the inventions um, are what stands out for me. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Um, but, uh. No, it's just, it's a stunning place that we've only looked some into, but every time we have, I get emotional. Mm -hmm. I can't express it. I can't explain it. Um, I did the same thing with Northern Ireland, or in Ireland in general, I mm -hmm. think. Um, just absolutely incredible place. But there's just something about, like, the Scottish people that we spoke to. Um, this, this certain, it feels like home to you, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It really, yeah. It, and we talked about this a little bit off yeah. camera. Let us know, please. If there's any other facts about Scotland not in this video, that that that, that should be added, period. Just, mm -hmm. That should be. That you like, one of your favorite facts, something interesting that you know of, I would love to know what they are. I'll do my best to read as many comments as possible. And please, hit the like button if you liked this video. Let us know if you learned something. Consider subscribing, too. But yeah, let us know if you learned something. Um, I, there's so many things in my head right now. I know, um, that was a lot to go through. Yeah. And, um, it was fun. Yeah, I can't wait to keep learning more, and I can't wait to read your comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining us on this episode of the Natasha and Debbie Show. Um, as always, it was fun as heck, and I learned a lot, and we hope that you did too. We will see you on the next one. Until then, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.